So as you see here, the Silk Road led not only to an exchange of goods, but also an exchange of ideas. <clears throat> During this time, we see a spread of world religions, languages, even color used in artwork, as demonstrated by trade of a blue metamorphic rock known as lapis. All right, students, you're dismissed. We'll pick up again here tomorrow. Remember to read your Strayer 14 to 22. Sorry for the interruption. My name is Kate. I'm a teacher. I heard you were an educator of some reputation. What can I help you with, Kate? Well, I noticed my students seem confused during some parts of my lesson. I want to assist them, but I'm not really sure which concepts they understand and which parts they don't. Hmm. Sounds like you need formative assessment data, but we can't get that standing around here. Are you ready for an adventure? Welcome to Launcher Classroom, I'm Kyle Pope. I have a question, where are your students? Okay, don't panic. I'm not asking about their physical location, but where are they in understanding your curriculum? As teachers, it's easy to become focused on the big test. We want our students to be prepared for the upcoming unit exam or the standardized end of the year final. However, once those have been completed, it's usually too late to make a difference in the student's mastery of the curriculum. That's why diagnosing areas where students struggle prior to the big test is so important. So today on Launch Your Classroom, we're going to focus on formative assessments, when to use them throughout the year, how to use them to inform your instruction, and provide you with two of our favorite easy to use formative assessments. Let's take a look at our first one now, entry and exit tickets. Entry tickets are given at the beginning of class to reactivate student knowledge learned in a previous lesson. Using this type of formative assessment is a great way to do a quick check at the start of class to see what your students are able to recall. These entry tickets can come in a variety of forms, but they should always ask questions that check your students' knowledge on the most important pieces of your curriculum. Kate's using entry tickets today. Let's take a look. All right, class, take your seats and get started on today's warm up. This is a review of the information we went over yesterday, so please try your best. Hmm, let's see. Question one What are the three stages of a liquid? Oh, that's easy water, ice, and vapor. And on to question two. What are the required temperatures for water to change through these stages? Hmm, I'm not as sure about this one. Okay class, it looks like question two was a bit of a tricky one, so let's go over it together. Who knows the condensation temperature to reach that stage? That was great. She monitored the learning of the students and found a few of them couldn't answer one of the questions. That gave her a great opportunity to do a quick review once the assessment was completed. On to our second activity, exit tickets. These are used at the end of class to measure student comprehension of the lesson you presented. I wonder how Kate will use exit tickets today. All right, gang, let's do a quick review of today's material with an exit ticket. Remember, there's only five minutes remaining, so please be prepared to hand me your ticket as the bell rings. Question one. What are the different stages of the water cycle? Let's see here. I remember precipitation, that's rain, and condensation, that makes the clouds, evaporation, and... Huh, I can't remember the other one. Eh. I'll come back to it and answer the next question. Now that the teacher has given the assessment, it's time to take a look at the results after class. Kate, how'd it go? 
Hmm, most of my students don't understand key parts of the water cycle. I'm going to adjust tomorrow's lesson plan to allow time to reteach this important concept with a different strategy. Nice. Kate gained some valuable knowledge from that exit ticket. With this information, the teacher has identified a gap in understanding and can now take action to ensure her students comprehend the material before moving on. That's what a formative assessment is all about. Formative assessments are a great tool to use in your classroom to check on student understanding. One of the best attributes of this type of assessment is that they can be used at any time. Unlike summative assessments that come at the end of a unit, you'll want to use formative assessments regularly to check the rate of progress. The three primary goals of a formative assessment are, one, to check your student's current content mastery level, two, to find which strategies have been effective in teaching the curriculum up until this point, and three, to determine how to help your students reach the learning objectives that they haven't mastered yet. Using a formative assessment allows for real-time data collection and provides an abundance of useful information. The information that you collect from the assessment allows you to monitor for differentiation and to identify the students who might need additional support for the lesson that you're teaching. The data provides quick feedback that students can use to measure their own improvement and watch their growth during a unit of instruction. And as for the teacher, it enables you to determine exactly where your students are in understanding. You can adjust instruction accordingly in order to close the learning gaps. Quick formative assessments will also make grading simpler for you, ensuring that you can reteach and move on with your next objectives in a relevant, timely way. The key to a successful formative assessment lies in its creation and execution. The activity should be brief and engaging, allowing students to quickly demonstrate to you what they have learned. Keep in mind that formative assessments are not long tests or high-stakes quizzes that take up important instructional time. They're a quick, targeted information gathering tool. They can be in the form of an entry ticket, an exit ticket, or even just a quick warm-up question at the start of class. The opportunities are limitless. Whichever shape or form you choose, be sure to use formative assessments often. Seems like we've been at this for days, Carolina Pope. At least we managed to avoid all those traps. Yeah, sometimes it... There! It looks like we found it. Wait! That's summative assessment data. We'll save that for another time. If that's summative, then what's that under the formative assessment data? Looks like a pressure plate. We're gonna need something with equal weight to put on it. Run! Oh no, the traps! This way. <sighs> we made it! And we have the data. <laughs> now that you have given your students formative assessments, you have a wealth of useful information that's available to you. In these short, objective-specific assignments, students are showing you what concepts they understand and which ones they don't. It's time to reap the benefits of your careful, formative assessments. Use them to plan your next lessons, determine what needs reteaching, and pace the rest of your unit of instruction. Your formative assessment results should indicate how many students need reteaching of a concept. If it's just one student or a small group, you can create a short review of the kinds of questions they still need to master. 
While the rest of your class works independently or with a co-teacher, take these students aside for guided practice. Then, give them a few questions to do on their own, during class, or even at home. Repeat this method until they show proficiency. Keep a bank of frequently missed questions for future use. If the majority of the class is struggling with an objective, it's time to reteach the lesson to the whole group using a new method of delivery. Choose something hands-on and active so that your students will remain engaged in spite of the repeated concepts. Formative assessments are quick and direct, so you can give them often. Not only do they reinforce student learning and measure student proficiency every step of the way, they also hold your students accountable. After all, these smaller grades indicate in real time what has and what has not been mastered. They will give students, parents, and you a more detailed picture of each student's success than one solitary end of unit test. Low stakes quizzes and assignments allow the students to become so familiar with your class content that they will feel less pressure when they take your higher stakes assessments. Keep track of which formative assessments result in your most thorough student learning so that you can duplicate your successes in the future. Make your ideas work double time by sharing your best methods with your PLC partners and by learning theirs. Next year, you'll feel super prepared with an abundance of strategies and you'll get the chance to use them with future students. Imagine being able to see your students' most problematic knowledge gaps in the clearest black and white sort of way. Okay, now turn it red and green and presto. You've got a great formative assessment tool called Red Note, Green Note. When you're ready to see what your class took away from your lesson, give each student a small stack of red and green sticky notes, just like these. Then set a timer and let your students jot down concepts and facts they understand on the green notes, one per note. And if they're struggling with a concept, have them write it on a red note. When the timer goes off, have your students place their completed notes in two designated spaces on your whiteboard, one for green notes and one for red notes. I had my students do this earlier today, so let's go take a look. Wow, the visual balance of red and green alone lets me know that most of my students are retaining my lesson. That's great news. Now I can pull the individual red notes off of the board read through them and determine what I need to reteach. Hmm, it looks like some students are a little confused about the desire for more land. I can use this as a starting point to build some questions for a class discussion. Students can take notes while we clarify the Louisiana Purchase together. This will hold them accountable for information and give them a handy personalized study guide. The green notes are valuable too, and not just as a way to determine what you've covered effectively. I'm going to go over each green note with my class tomorrow as a way to fact check in case some students make mistakes with their recall. Save these red and green notes. When the time comes to measure student learning across an entire unit, you can use the notes to generate questions for a quiz or other summative assessment you'll have the satisfaction of having created something hand-tailored to your students' educational needs. Your class will feel invested in the learning process as they see their specific questions and ideas addressed in the assessments you provide. So give this strategy the green light and it will quickly become a classroom favorite. A formative assessment is an essential tool for checking student understanding during a course of study. By using them frequently and intentionally, you can get a better grasp on which of your teaching techniques are the most effective and which topics you may need to spend a bit more time on. Most importantly, we encourage you to use formative assessments because they provide you with the opportunity to increase your students' content mastery before the big test. This month on Launch Your Classroom, we're going to continue our discussion on formative assessments. We're going to provide you with another useful way to assess your students' understanding by challenging them to analyze their own content blind spots. We have an expert interview where we'll talk about how grading factors into formative assessments, and we're going to have a wellness segment about checking in with your friends and family. So be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel to get all of our upcoming professional development content. Thank you and we'll see you next time on Launch Your Classroom.
Carolina Pope. Great to see you again, Kate. I wanted to stop by and thank you for helping me get the formative assessment data. I found out exactly which parts of my curriculum were confusing my students, retaught those sections, and now I know my students have met their learning objectives. That is so good to hear. I guess there's just one thing left. That's right, the unit test. Feel like going after some summative data? I thought you'd never ask.